Hey, this is Brad with Rev Robotics, and today we are going to dive into tips and tricks for building the 2024-2025 Rev Duo FTC Starter Bot, as well as some upgrades we think can add great benefit to your designs. So swimming on in, you can see we have made some substantial changes to the robot. But before we go any deeper, let's cover some basic things that will help you get building with any design. With the Rev Duo build system, we utilize a lot of M3 hex head screws and nylock nuts that are used to attach things like this bracket. Preloading all your brackets can save a lot of time. As you can see with this bracket, we have ribs on one side, and these generally face towards the extrusion. I start by locating the hole I want to preload, and on the flat side of the bracket, float an M3 nylock nut over the hole and use my index finger to hold it in place. I then use my other hand to bring an M3 hex head screw through the hole and begin threading it into the nylock. Once the nylock starts spinning, I know the preload is complete and the bracket can be inserted into the extrusion and tightened when ready to do so. Our ultraplanetary gearboxes feature great flexibility in controlling the gear reduction ratios by swapping in cartridges. However, a common mistake in assembly can be over-tightening the M3 cap head screws that hold everything together. I like to tighten the screws in a star pattern, going to the opposite side and working my way around. Once they are all tightened, I will actually loosen them all and then re-snug them to make sure that the gearbox will hold together but not be over-constrained. When using chain, there are two main ways to assemble your chain. Now, first of all, I highly recommend making a guide on the table or a cutting mat or, or using a ruler to keep all your chain lengths the same. In using the chain tool to break apart your chain, you can also use it to reassemble using nothing additional, which can make for a reliable chain joint. However, it can make it harder to service if you can't get your chain tool into a spot to re-break the chain. So another option is utilizing master links. Master links allow you to connect chain effortlessly and take them back apart at any time but make sure to have a few spares on hand in case you lose those pesky clips. When bringing together more complex structures, it can be a good idea to use a square or some measurement device to make sure your shafts and extrusion land in the right spots. That way, when you go to assemble, things line up. You can always adjust though, so feel free to leave a few joints loose until you get it fully assembled. Just don't forget to go back and retighten everything. If these tools aren't available to you, you can always use something with a known 90 degree angle, such as a sheet of paper. Speaking of tightening, check your shaft collars. It can be a good idea to make sure these are much tighter than normal joints. You can even use a tiny amount of thread lock to make sure they don't go anywhere. If you have the room to access it and doesn't interfere with your robot at all, you can also consider using a hex head screw to replace the set screw, which is especially good if you ever lose them. Getting your claw to work just right requires setting it up using the SRS programmer. This is a great tool that can set the range of your Rev Servo smart servos so that it opens and closes exactly where you want every time. You can always make some fine adjustments in code, but it's a good idea to first set it on the SRS beforehand to prevent any potential issues later on. Wire management is really important and often overlooked. One wrong run of wire can lead to a pinch point and a wire shortening, uh, shorting or losing connection. We recommend using a length of wire to form a service loop. This loop keeps wires bundled together and helps provide a predictable path of movement as your arm pivots. Proper strain relief ensures that your wires are not causing unnecessary stress on the connectors and that the connection remains snug. Leaving a bit of slack on the connector side helps avoid unintentional tension that could damage the connector and allows for easy disconnection when needing to test or replace components. A smart tug is a test where you test your wiring by tugging on a wire with a reasonable amount of force to see if it comes undone. The smart tug simulates many common scenarios, including a wire getting caught on a field element, actuator, or another robot. It is a good practice to do this test anytime you connect a wire to ensure it is fully seated in the connector and secure. The preset positions, such as intake and low basket in the default starter bot code, work using the built-in encoders of the motors. To ensure the robot moves to the correct position for these presets, make sure the robot is powered on while it's in its initialization orientation. The orientation is similar as the robot is sitting now, with the arm down and the wrist folded up. Let's talk about some of the upgrades we implemented into our starter bot and how they can potentially help your team on the field. So in terms of driving, Arcade Drive brings drive control to one stick for differential drivetrains. This may be more or less comfortable for your driver, so having time to practice and feel what is best for your team is always a good idea. 
There are many ways to also split control across two game pads. We recommend testing different combinations with your team to decide what feels the most comfortable to you. We have a version in our documentation of the program that is intended to be just one example of using two game pads. Arm and wrist have a control have been moved to a second game pad, while the main game pad handles driving and the servos on the intake and claw. We've made a couple of upgrades to our intake to improve its functionality. We noticed that it can scrape the floor a little, so we added these 90 millimeter Duo Omni wheels to allow the intake to slide on the floor and greatly reduce friction. We also swapped the corrugated plastic out for one millimeter thick polycarbonate. This material can be cut with scissors and use a hole punch to make tight fitting holes. We actually doubled up the plastic to make it just the right stiffness to still flex on the intake, but not too much. The benefit of using polycarbonate is also visually clear, allowing you to easily see what piece you have in the robot at any time. Harder to notice upgrades we did were in the claw. We upgraded the servo shaft adapter to the aluminum servo shaft adapter. You may find that the small spline of the servo on the plastic adapter can wear down over time. And this upgrade makes sure that your output is reliable through the whole season. The obvious upgrade that we implemented for the starter bot this year was changing over to the Mechanum Drive system. We actually used the Rev Mechanum Drivetrain Kit V2, and after following the build guide we have available, we just had to slide the middle rail back to accommodate our arm assembly. But you can buy all the individual pieces, including the wheel set, in order to accomplish the same thing in your robot. Do note that we needed to add additional ultra planetary and HD hex motor kits to the build, as well as an expansion hub that allowed us to control the additional motors. But the improvement in drive control really allows you to do some fantastic things. As a parting tip, I recommend making sure you check as many nuts and bolts as possible, because you never know when one may came loose in a match. You can also come up with a checklist before and after matches to make sure your team is prepared to go into the deep. We here at REV wish you all the best of luck this season and don't forget to have fun.